Hi everyone, this is Judy. If you're seeing this video, you probably just watched the other YouTube video I made maybe four years ago called My Family's Journey with Glioblastoma. And I've seen a lot of comments about asking for an update with Matt and basically everything. So here's a video I wanted to share with everyone just to give you guys an update. So just to give a recap, on September 10th, 2013, that was when Matt was initially diagnosed with a brain tumor, which was three and a half inches um, in his right parietal lobe. And within a few weeks, he had brain surgery. So we had that at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles, and they were able to remove about 99% of the tumor. Um, so after that, there we dealt with a lot of seizures, a lot of chemo, radiation. He had to have another surgery. He had a shunt put in um, because he had a lot of CSF buildup. And so that was causing a lot of swelling and a lot of headaches. So we dealt with that and all his MRIs were good. There were no sign of any recurrence. Two and a half years and during that time, we just had our regular doctor visits. He took his daily pills. We had our regular MRI scans. And in April 2016, the MRI showed a recurrence. And typically they say with tumors, when it comes back, it comes back with vengeance and it's super aggressive. But his, the one he had, glioblastoma, was already the most aggressive form of that type of brain cancer or the glioma and so I believe at that time he decided he didn't want to do any more treatments we did try the Novacure it's kind of like a cap that you wear 24 7 and I don't think it was feasible because he especially with brain tumors you get irritable so the Novacure treatment did not last I don't even think a week. Um, he just did not want to wear it 24 seven. And I think he also felt like he felt weird in it. Um, but we, we pretty much stayed home most of the time. And during that time, he wanted to make a trip out to North Carolina, um, to the beach with family and see everyone. And he kind of knew it was going to be his last trip and that's what he wanted to do. Um, he started losing some functions during this time and he was kind of limping and he had like a facial droop on the left side, kind of like a stroke patient. We stayed for about a week and even with the handicap access, it was really hard to get him out on the beach. Um, he was in a wheelchair by that time. He had to use a cane to help him walk and during this trip also, I believe all the funeral arrangements, just advanced planning was already intact. And so that was going on also. And we flew back to California in San Diego and on, I think it was in July, we were going to start palliative care, but he was already declining so quickly, we went straight to hospice care on July 27th. Exactly a month into hospice care, Matt passed away at the age of 27 on August 28, 2016. I guess the entire time, during that time, he was exhibiting all the signs and symptoms of an adult actively dying. And I didn't have any medical background, so I had no idea or I was in denial. But he did pass away with family at his house and it was hard. I mean, my children was there, our children was there. My youngest was one, my oldest was four and a half. So he knew, he knew what was happening. And I'm gonna say a week later, um, we transported his body to North Carolina and we had the funeral here in Winston. 
after the funeral, we flew back to San Diego and proceeded with life as the best as we could. Um, I went back to work, my kids went to daycare, and his parents were still out there, and we kind of just regrouped and tried to figure out what was the best option for us. And I knew it was in my kids' best interest to have more family, um, especially he has, my kids have a lot of cousins here in North Carolina, so we decided to move back here. I mean, I had a really great job, and I miss my friends there, and I love San Diego, but I needed to do what was best for my kids, and we moved back to North Carolina. On the subject of my kids, so my youngest was one when he passed, as I mentioned briefly. My son was four, and he still, there's still good days and bad days. I mean, the same for me as well. And so I'm very overprotective over them. And I do have my son seeing a psychologist regularly. And so we're still trying to work through it. Um, they're, they're in a really good school district. And overall, they're happy. Um, so I think I made the best decision with moving from San Diego to here. But for now, this is where we're staying. And, you know, we never know. So... And as for me, like I mentioned, um, there's ups and downs. I'm actually in the middle of switching careers. Um, I previously worked at a tech company headquarters in San Diego. And when I moved back here, I just had to regroup myself and try to figure out what I wanted to do. I needed something more fulfilling. So I just wrapped up my prereqs for nursing. I should be starting in January. I'm currently taking CNA right now, which is a requirement, and I'm trying to honestly just live my best life. I went skydiving, and I'm just down to try new things because I've been through the worst of the worst, so I try to, I'm always positive, and I try to see the best in every situation, and I try to see the best in people as well. I genuinely care about everyone. So if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back to you guys. And if you guys have Instagram, I recently got it. So if you guys would like to follow me, um, it is at callof.judy. So that's C-A-L-L-O-F period J-U-D-Y. Um, it's just pretty much just me living my best life um, or my life the best that I can. Um, thanks for watching everyone and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.